what's up guys, the Monkey here, and today I'm going to be giving you uh, a full kind of how to use, in a way, the support class uh, in Battlefield 1's beta. Now obviously it's the beta, so things are subject to change and things like that. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm... Yeah, uh, my playstyle is support. Uh, if you've played Battlefield, uh, any Battlefield game, uh, you know that there's different classes. So there's, in Battlefield 1, there is Assault, Medic, Support, and Scout. Now, uh, Assault is essentially the anti-vehicle class, uh, as well as a close quarters type of class. It is very, very good, and I really like that class, um, but it's not f always my playstyle. Uh, the Medic class, now we've played with the Mondragon, it's, uh, you know, the Mondragon, um, I think it's the Mondragon, uh, it's, this, it's one of the, it's just like the sniper variant kind of thing. Um, the Mondragon sharpshooter, that's it. Um, now I play with that, I uh, completely, not completely re uh, retract my statement about how the medic classes are underpowered, but how the, all of the guns are completely useless, because to be honest, they are not. The Mondragon Sharpshooter is completely amazing. It's not OP, but it's really good. So, uh, I will, you know, I'll give it that. Um, then you have the support. Now, that's what I'm getting on today. Uh, so, I'll tell you about that in a minute. And then you have the Scout. Uh, I'm, I'm good at Scout. I'm alright at Scout. You know, um, in this game, it's, it seems really easy to get headshots. Like, really simple. I'm, the Scout actually might be pretty OP. I mean, on the map we've been given, it's 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 pretty OP because there's a lot of open place and there's a lot of uh, ways for sniping can kill you from that distance. So, yeah, um, let's get into the support class then. This is my type of role when I'm running with my squad. We all have different playstyles, so we all go our you know our, we all go our you know our preferred roles. Now, most of the time we do have double ups, but that's pretty much fine because we use different weapons because we do like different weapons so we and you know different gadgets and things like that so obviously we do have somewhat of a variant or variety of uh, people in our sort of squad um, now with me running support I play with the MG15 suppressive it is an incredibly amazing gun it comes with a bipod and a sort of a mid-range scope i wouldn't call it long range although it does look like one of the sniper scopes and yeah it's it's um it's pretty good it's tap fire is really good i like to tap fire with it but most of all i like to go full auto and like medium range because it completely fucks up the enemy team and if you're at a longer sort of mid-range it will completely wipe out anybody. I've had some epic kill streaks with this gun, in, even in close quarters, so it's absolutely amazing. Um, you'll see a bunch of that in the uh, gameplay because obviously I'm playing with support. Um, that's another thing you should uh, take in. Um, uh, in most of my videos, I'll probably be playing support because support for me is my go-to class. I actually love playing support. I like to hang back a bit, suppressive fire, you know, on people. I like to give ammo to my fellow teammates and support the team that way. Um, obviously, I do like to cap as well, but when I but that's usually when I'm not playing support. Support. I'm usually if I am capping, I'm sort of at the back where the action isn't taking place, but I'm picking off people or suppressing people from a distance. So that's kind of my play role uh, or my uh, play style. So yeah, um, the MG15 suppressive. It has a rate of fire of. 500 so that's rpm of 500 that is a, a really good rpm for an lmg i think especially uh, in this game uh it's rpm is is pr is pretty good um it's i think um bullet mo no it's muzzle velocity is 870 or 870 uh, uh, meters a second or whatever ms uh, meters yeah meters per second see i'm so clever guys um you'll see this on the screen so if I get something wrong, you'll be able to tell me. It's reload time with a, you know, when all the bullets haven't been fired. So say you've got, what, like a, one bullet. It can be at least one bullet in the magazine left. Um, it's reload time is minus one second. Um, so yeah, that's um, pretty, pretty fucking fast. 
not gonna lie. Uh, when it's empty though, it's 5.5 seconds. This is just off of this website that I'm, you know, I'm reading off the website. So if, um, if something is wrong, because the minus one second doesn't seem that very, you know, very, uh, what, what would you say, um, real. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, it's mag size is 100, obviously it's an LMG. Um, it has a recoil decrease of six. Uh, it's first shot, uh, it's first shot recoil multiplier is 1.8, so that's not that bad. It's upward recoil is seven, uh, 0 0.07, which is okay, it's okay. I find it really easy to use, to be honest. And then it's left and right recoil is uh, 0 0.9, so that kind of balances out a little bit. Um, so most of the recoil is going upwards, but with that bipod, you really don't need that. Um, when you're aiming down sights and not moving, um, the bullets can fly off from the position. It's around about 0.24, uh, but when you are moving, it's about 0.96. So it's not the best of accuracy, you know. But you know, whatever. It's 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 it, it, well, it's kind of like a laser beam when you have the bipod. But if you don't have the bipod, then it's not exactly like a laser beam. Um, it does shoot kind of everywhere, but. I, I love using it and I just find it amazing to use so I'm pretty sure you guys would find the same if you like playing a support um, it's hip fire when you're not moving uh, standing at 0 0.83 uh, crouching at 0 0.75 and prone it is 0 0.67 uh, when you are moving though when you're standing it's 3 when you're crouched is 2.75 and when you're prone is 2.5 which is uh, pretty decent. I mean, I don't think you're gonna be hip firing this gun a lot because you're kind of gonna be further back. So yeah, um, it's spread increase per shot is uh, minus 0 0.03 times minus x. I, you know what? I'm just gonna leave that because Jesus Christ. Um, uh, spread decrease per second is 12.6. So that seems pretty good for ADS and hip fire so I'm pretty sure most of the LMGs and I don't know rifles and weapons like that they have a, um, a spread decrease is pretty much exactly the same but yeah uh, not everything is exactly the same so yeah that's the stats on the uh, MG15 suppressive that's the LMG I use that's the LMG you're seeing on the screen now uh, you know the one I'm using um, uh, in comparison with the Lewis machine gun, uh, the you know the Lewis uh, gun, I'll compare it to the Lewis uh, uh, Lewis gun artillery. Its RPM is only 480, and its uh, muzzle velocity is 740. So you can see the difference there. Its magazine size in the artillery is 47, so you can see the difference there. And yeah, you, yeah. But I'm not going to put that on screen because that's not important to be honest. Because you you just you really do want the MG15 suppressive. Um, I think the pistol I use is the M1911 because we only have two pistols at the moment. Um, but yeah, the M1911 has a 299 RPM, exactly the same as the PO8 pistol. Um, its muzzle velocity is two, uh, 250 or 250. Uh, its bullet drop is 12 meters per second squared or whatever the fuck that is. Is a Z. Okay, then. Um, when you have at least one bullet left, in the magazine, when you reload it, it'll take 1.16 or 1.16 seconds. Um, when you reload it with, you know, without a bullet or, you know, without any bullets left in the magazine, it'll only take 1.7 seconds. Uh, obviously, it's got eight rounds in the magazine, whereas the pure weight pistol has nine. Um, its reload time threshold is 0.8x. So whatever that is. Um, I'm pretty sure that's all you really need to know about the M1911. Uh, I mean, it's a pistol. It's a sidearm. I don't really use it much. Um, so, yeah. Uh, there is that. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's the stats for um, the, the my shorter support, The you know, the guns I play. Um, and as you can see, uh, I do get into a lot of close quarters um, sometimes. So hip firing with the LMG, although in stats it didn't sound too good, in the actual game it really does feel really natural to hip fire with it sometimes. And yeah, it just it just works. Um, with my support, uh, obviously we only have like limited gadgets. We have the trip mines that 
I don't really use because they just don't feel effective to me at all. Um, I just don't see the point in these trip mines because, to be honest, I I've, I don't think I've seen that many people get killed from them. And I've never been killed from one, so I just don't get, you know, the, I don't really get, I don't really see the point in them. Um, I've placed them down before, like in a, in a doorway or something, but the, I, I've, you know, I've never got a kill. I think I've had hit markers where somebody's been in the room and then they've like run through but been able to survive it. Which is, you know, whatever. Uh, I just don't really see the point in the... Or I don't really see the practi uh, practicality of these little uh, sort of trip mine claymore replacements. Um, uh, but then we obviously have the ammo crate and the ammo uh, pouch. Um, most people tend to go for the ammo crate. Um, uh, in Battlefield 4, at least. Um... But in this one, I I kind of like the ammo pouch. Um, it resupplies everything, and you all you have to do is throw it down, and it can resupply your grenades instantly. It's kind of OP. I, whereas the ammo crate, it doesn't really do much for like you with the ammo pouch, you can completely resupply a anti a assault anti tank grenades and anti tank launcher and his normal grenade all at the same time. Whereas the and his guns like if his guns are low on ammo he can get those uh, like ammo for that as well um then there is also um but with the ammo crate that is um it, it doesn't seem to be as effective so i like to run uh the ammo pouches so i can throw those towards people and then it'll like stick to them in a way and yeah um again uh, and towards this end of uh, towards the end of this video, I'm gonna say medics. I think the only thing now you need to change because I've played with some guns and yes, okay, it's getting better for me uh, playing as a medic. But um, the sort of you know the medics can't really revive. I I haven't been healed by a medic that's just on my team. Like I have on accident. Like he's put down a, a medic crate. And I've walked past it, but I haven't been healed, like, actually with uh, bandages. Like, bandages are better in this game as well. I think the smaller ones seem better and a bit OP in uh, in this game with support and medic. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I, the only time I've really been healed by a medic is when they're in my squad and they're in my party. And I can tell them, yo, I need, I need meds. Um, and then, obviously, they'll throw meds at me. Um... So yeah, I I really don't see much point in um the, like not the medic, but like they need I don't know. People just aren't playing medic how they should do, to be honest. Um but that I mean a lot of Call of Duty players are moving over from Call of Duty towards Battlefield, so they do need to pick up some team skills. Yeah. Um uh yeah, they yeah, they need to pick up on some team skills and things like that. Um but, you know, that was that's learned. I mean, I had to learn that, and pretty much anybody who's ever played Battlefield has to learn, you know, you need to learn your team skills, because if you can't work as a team, then you're basically screwed. Um, especially in this one, the, the teamwork is, like, a big, big part. Um, I'm probably going to have to end it here. Uh, so, yeah, I've been the Medimoggy, guys. I hope you've learned a little bit from this, or at least, I don't know, taken something in. So, yeah, I've been the Medimoggy, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya! Banana